Hi, I'm Luke Sherveld. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. This is going to be part one of a series of uh, probably just two, but uh, I want to talk about these three units. So we've got the Nanlux Evoke 900C, we've got the Aperture Storm 1000C, and we've got the Godox NOLED M1000R. So these are all full color units. They're all, you know, in the same ballpark as terms of output, uh, but we'll deal with that in another episode. So this episode, I just want to talk about sort of their form factor, the feel, the way the uh, modifiers fit on, and uh, just, you know, here you can kind of see their relative size. So here I'll, I'll point them all to the front. These two, the Godox and the Aperture, are Bowen's mount. This one is inset. This one is, the Aperture one is, uh, comes out. So actually, you can see that better on the side view. This one is also a, a more of a flat mount, the, uh, the Nanlux. So the Nanlux is the, the one that's been out the longest. So it's um, a, a good sized body, uh, quite similar to the 1000C. And then the M1000R is a, a smaller unit. So just overall. Seems like a smaller cob, medium cob. Maybe this is the larger one. Yeah. Then they all have kind of a, you know, frosted front. And a little different color science as well, right? Because the 900C is RGB ACL. Then this is uh, Blair CG. So you're adding the indigo. Then with the Godox, you've got RGB WW. You know, little different color science. We'll find out what that means in the next episode. But this one, we're just sort of dealing with the physicalness of, of these units. So um, as far as how they hook up, all of them are heads that go to power boxes or control boxes. So the Nanlux, the Evoke series, you know, it's all in the head. All the control is in the head. So you're, you're getting that all out of the, the back here. Uh, and that means then you have a smaller power box to go to. And, you know, for a 900 watt, this is a really diminutive unit, uh, that, that, that piece of it. For the aperture storm unit, you've got a good size control box, same as the 1200 X, same as the 1200D, you know, sort of the same box. You've got controls here and then lots of uh, ins and outs on the side. They all come with a, a clamp as well, so you can put it onto your stand. And then the Godox has a substantial control box as well. And just a very clear interface is, and, uh, but yes, again, uh, a hefty control box. Then if you're going to put this out on a a boom, if you're hanging these units, putting them up in the grid or something like that, and you're having the control box uh, somewhat distance away, then, you know, that can be handy, but it can also be handy uh, to not have to deal with that so much and just have it all wireless. These are all internal CRMX, so um, no problem there. You don't have to put an added receiver onto the controllers. Then let's talk about just connectors. So with the Nanlux, it's the same on both sides. So you have the same connector. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your ins and your outs. They're the same. So that's nice. With the aperture, they are different, of course, but uh, it's a very smooth use of the lineup, the white line, and, it, and it's a very easy uh, in and out. Uh, with the Godox, uh, it's not a problem. It's, uh, you know, different on both sides, but uh, a very solid lock uh, once you line it up. Now, you know, re reiterating, uh, this has a, a proprietary mount. You know, this is the, the Nanlux mount uh, Evoke series, and then these are both Bowens. So that means the modifiers you use, you have to... If you're going to use similar modifiers for these units, then you have to be able to swap out 
the mounting system for that modifier. Uh, now let's uh, move on to Fresnels. So if we're putting Fresnels on here, this is the lightweight Fresnel. It's still pretty hefty as far as uh, you know its width, but this is the FL28, and it has you know the Evoke series mount on it. Okay, and then if you're uh, spot flooding it, here's your doors. It's internal, so it's not getting longer as you uh, spot or flood. So that's that's nice, and it is lightweight, um, and it you know it makes it a little front heavy, but um, the locking mechanism easily takes care of that. And how these actually play when they're uh, burning, we'll deal with that in a different episode. All right, so now we've got this Fresnel. It's hefty. It's uh, it's got some weight to it, but you know, it doesn't have that depth here. Put that next to it, you know. Um, so it's, it's half the depth, but it still has that, that weight to it, so it makes it front heavy. You still have that going on. We got doors, and when we spot flood it, it does make it longer. So there is that, and there is, as you can see, Good amount of weight but again this lock can take that so then you get your degrees we'll see how these play uh, when they're lit in another episode so that just gives you that i might as well put this one on so you can see it and now this one you will know, raise it up just ever so slightly so here's the fresnel for that so it's you know not terribly large is Bowen's. There you go. It's not very front heavy. Uh, it does make it longer, but again, yeah, not too bad. Uh, has pretty good, you know, weight ratio. Uh, but I don't have doors for these, and I don't see doors uh, in the literature as well. So that's uh, something to consider. All right, now let's go to the ellipsoidal version of all these. This is just a regular Bowen's lock, you know, so there's some play still. Here you've got the tightening. Here you have the more positive lock of the proprietary mount. There are different ways you can go for an ellipsoidal uh, with the 900C, but the one I sort of choose the most often is this version. So you just get a piece of glass that separates out your uh, emitters from a, a barrel adapter that then will take series two ETC lenses, which is awesome. Now it doesn't make it very uh, front heavy. There's another adapter where uh, the this portion of it has its own yoke and then you just pop this on the back uh, it just takes up a little more room so uh, I prefer this just simple uh, with with an adapter and then you can put all your old uh, ETC lenses on that very easily and you can rotate this as well so that's that's slick I'm usually fuzzing out whatever I'm putting in this as far as a gobo, or I'm just using it to cut, and, and that works well. So that's that. If we move over to the aperture, it has its own proprietary fixture that will go on here. I'll raise this up ever so slightly so you can see it. So this is quite a, a beast. You know, it's, this is the Spotlight Max. This is the 50 degree. And so you put different barrels in just like you would here. There's also a sleeve so you can put your ETC barrels in. Um, and there's two locking knobs, which is a bit of an odd system, but there you have it. And then you can put the gobo holder that rotates the gobo, but 
this does not spin. So then you put your unit on the back of this. Tighten that up. Then you probably want to get this yoke because this yoke does not come off. So you probably want to give this yoke, you know, a little better balance by putting it more forward, uh, but not too bad uh, with two lockdowns on left and right. And, you know, the center of gravity is, is uh, designed for the unit. It's a substantial length, but if you think about it, you know, really, what is this? Uh, you know, it's not that much different um, overall length. It's just, this comes in a large case. So if you're taking the case with it, you know, it's just uh, a, 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 a bit of a deal. And then we'll see what we've got for this guy. To have an ellipsoidal front on here, you take this unit out of its own yoke, and then you can either repurpose this yoke, um, or you also get a yoke with the ellipsoidal mount. Then you'd put that in there. It's the same yoke, uh, and but a very diminutive um, spot mount. And then you put this on the back. Now here I have it mounted so that, you know, this is angled, so you can have it angled this way or angled that way. Uh, you just happen to have it in this mode. So now it's kind of back heavy, but again, this lock will take it. And then you just get different proprietary barrels for the front, just like you would with this one. And there is no sleeve to use ETC barrels, but uh, what's nice about this is the way it goes, it's fine tuning in order to do your spot flood. It, it's, it's a mechanical thing rather than a sort of analog uh, jam it up and down and hope you get it. So that's actually a really nice um, feature. And uh, it takes uh, normal size gobos, but the holder for the gobos is uh, a, a certain proprietary thing, I believe. Um, that's been my experience so far. So I only have the 26 degree, but I'm ordering, there's a 19 and a 36 as well. There's no 50. This has a 50, and of course you can put 50s on both of these with ETC barrels. So that's uh, a minus uh, on this side, doesn't have that, that wide, uh, wider lens, but uh, I do like the mechanism. I do like the size, and I do like the fact that you can rotate this easily. So there's sort of pluses and minuses in all of these cases, and kind of what you reach for is kind of what works for you. So that is just the quick overview of sort of the, the physical aspects of these units. And then in another episode, we'll get to lighting and color and uh, dimming and those sorts of things. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.